Hey guys, we're back again today, hard racing, doing our 22 Grom RR project bike. Today we are installing the Olin's rear shock, the HO047. This is a Grom RR specific shock. Um, it's got a new bracket kit and uh, the reservoir mount specific for the new one with the new case cover. So if you're looking to get um, the Grom shock the olden shock for the gra make sure you get the correct one ho 047 so as most of you know uh the rear shock is obviously a weak point on the honda grom they got to keep in budget to keep the bike at a modest three thousand three hundred dollars range and when they do that they have to cut corners and suspension is generally one of the places they do that so upgrading to a Olin shock with proper spring rates and proper valving, fully adjustable, is a huge upgrade to making your Grom perform better, ride more comfortable, more enjoyable to ride, handle better in the corners, less sag, less pogo stick action, bouncing off the rear end. Everything just is better when you have a nice high quality rear shock like this Olin's. And of course, this rear shock is an excellent match for their Olin's FDK 112 fork cartridge kit, which we were also installing on our bike as well. We have done a video on that prior on the previous Grom. The installation is the same. And together, having the Olin's on the front and the rear of the bike makes completely transforms the bike into what we all wish it would have been from the factory in the first place. This has uh, two springs, as you can see, included with the kit, along with all the mounting hardware, stainless hardware, aluminum clamp and bracket, and a nice stainless spanner wrench. No more of those double lock nut spanners for the spring preload. Now it's just one. It's got a little nylon insert that you can loosen that holds it on the threads from rotating when you are set and done and you loosen the nylon nut and you can use that little stainless spanner wrench to rotate and increase your spring preload on that shock. You get two different springs. What are they for? Well, you got different spring rates for different people, different rider weights. So basically um, for lighter guys, you have a softer spring and for heavier guys, you have the heavier spring. So that's a nice benefit of having this. It comes with both of them. It's actually pretty easy to remove you can just back the collar all the way out, takes the tension off the spring, you can pop off the lower clamp um, retainer and swap the spring out, put the new one on. So today we're gonna show you how easy it is to install it. You pretty much just need basic tools and some uh, way to suspend the rear up a little bit to take the load off the shock. The easiest way we found is a floor jack and we'll show you how Quick and easy it is to put that on. All right, so the first step is going to be removing the seat. Then we're gonna remove the side panels. And then we're gonna remove the rear hugger. All right, so the next step is you'll want to remove this bolt, which holds the reservoir so you can move it out of the way. So next, remove these two Phillips head screws so that you can remove this plastic cover. All right, and it's also a good idea to put a piece of tape over this battery terminal because you're gonna be using wrenches around this area and you don't want it to touch it. And when I say tape, you wanna use something like duct tape or gaffer tape. All right, so now you have access to a 17 millimeter nut on one side and a 14 millimeter bolt on the other side. All right, and 
all you'll want to do is take this nut off, but you still need to leave the bolt inserted into the shock. All right, and now you want to do the same thing in the bottom bolt. And again, all you're trying to do is just remove the nut. to do this but we've found that the easiest most readily available way to do this is by using a floor jack so what you want to do is just take a piece of wood and put it on your floor jack so it's in between your floor jack and your bike so once you have your floor jack in position you want to raise it slowly so that your tire will spin freely so all you're trying to do is to raise the floor jack so that your tire spins freely. You don't need to raise it any more than that. So of course, right now as you see, the bike is in a very precarious position. So you want to take your bolts out very slowly without shaking the bike. Just very carefully, very slowly. So right now, you should be able to remove the bolt with your finger if you've done everything correctly. And we recommend doing the top one first and then doing the bottom one next. Now, even more so, do not bump your bike because your tire can, can slam and will up into your tail section. All right, so now you're going to route the canister on your new Olin shock through this path and underneath the bodywork bracket, as you can see we've done here. All right, so once you've got the canister routed and so you can mount the shock up, just Gently set the canister against the bike so that you can get the shock mounted into position. And all you're trying to do right now is to get the bolts into both holes quickly. All right, so at this point, you should have both bolts into position on the shock making it safe again. All right, now this position or this point, we can go ahead since we got the shock into position, we can go ahead and remove our floor jack. Okay, and next we want to go ahead and put the nuts back on the shock bolts. So now that I have these bolts cinched down, I just need to tighten them down to 32 foot-pounds. So next step is to screw the reservoir back into place. Next you want to assemble the bracket as you see here using blue Loctite.
Okay, so next go ahead and slide the clamp onto the canister like this and do it carefully so you don't scratch your canister. All right, so next step is to remove these two case bolts. Okay, so next step is to take these two bolts, install the washers, and then put blue Loctite on them. Okay, so go ahead and install your bolts in the bracket and make sure to put the aluminum spacer on this bolt. Okay, and once you've got these case bolts tightened down, go ahead and rotate your canister into position. And make sure the hose is not rubbing up against anything. Okay, and next I'm gonna take this little clamp bolt, put some blue Loctite on it, and install that. And make sure before you tighten it down, that your canister is where you want it to be. All right, and just remember, this is a small bolt going into aluminum, so just don't over tighten it. All right, so you get this extremely long zip tie to secure the hose so it doesn't come into contact with anything sharp. And we found a good place to install this is right here on the back side of this bodywork bracket. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put the bodywork panels back on and install the rear hugger. Okay, and make sure to put your wallet tray back in. And of course, this shock is fully adjustable. You've got compression adjustment here. You've got rebound adjustment here, and you've got spring preload adjustment on the collar, which will allow you to completely adjust the shock to your personal preference. Having had Olin shocks on all of our other bikes, we can definitely tell you that this will completely transform your ride. And we hope you enjoyed our installation video. If you want us to create more great videos, please help support the channel by simply clicking the like button down below and be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you're notified when we post up new videos. If you have any questions, please be sure to send us an email, give us a call, we are always here to help. And of course, check out our website at hardracing.com. See you soon.